All right, welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. We're going to go over our first lighting effect today. It's going to be a simple campfire. And as you can see, when the player is out of range, he's darkened. And as he walks in, he slowly gets lit up. So let's get started. Just real quick, all you'll need for this is just a simple scene. It can be simpler than this. And I have two layers. I have a ground layer with the grass below. And then I have a player layer with everything else, including the player object to move around and the campfire object with the animation of whatever you choose. So with that, let us get started and go to objects and start to set up our campfire lights. So I'm gonna name this campfire. I'm gonna give it the campfire animation. I'm gonna call it a neutral. I'm gonna not let anything attack it, but I want the player and the enemy to not be able to walk through it. We'll hit okay and we get our first action which I'm going to call setup. And our player does not darken the screen, so let's go to our campfire. And the first thing we want to do is set up the scene, and we want to apply a screen effect to the, to the uh, scene. We want to darken it 60% like I've been doing in the other tutorial. And then time until completion, we want it to be zero. So instantly, we'll go to 60% dark and we will click OK. Now, let's see what we need as far as lighting goes. Let's, let's just take a look again and see what's going on. So, what you can see here is that the, the campfire looks like it's kind of pulsating. Looks like it's moving a little bit. And how, how this is happening is that there's actually three light sources going on with this move. And I'm just bouncing between those light sources and each one is sized a little bit different like one pixel off so I have one that is say one pixel one two pixel and then one is three pixel and then they're just they're bouncing in between and they're bouncing at a different time than than the other one too so it, it, ha it adds a little bit of a random factor to it and you can get more random but we'll we'll just go with what what's simple and what's available right off the bat. So with that said, we're going to need three different states. We're going to need, and we can just copy and paste this, and we're going to need the state for the fire that is light number one. And then we can paste another one, and we can get the fire light two. So this will be the state when it's in fire light two. And then we can get our last one here and we can just say the state is gonna be when it's in fire light three. And so with that, we wanna start with one light. So we'll just go from setup, add a link, click on fire light one and just say unconditional. So right off the bat, it goes from setup, darkens the screen and goes to the straight to the fire light one. Now one thing that we need to do is that this setup also contains the motion. It sets the motion. And so what we want to do on these other states is to take over the motion from this original setup. If you don't take over the motion, it's going to restart the motion. And you're going to get this glitchy look as far as the campfire animation goes. So as long as you're taking over the motion, it's just going to keep looping the motion smoothly. And that is, yeah, that's how that works. So we're going to go from Firelight 1 to Firelight 2. So we need a link there. We're going to add a link from 1 to 2. And we are going to specify this is the one where it's bouncing based off of a wait time. So we're going to add a after a certain amount of time passes. And for the effect I've been using, I've just been doing a 0.15 for the first one. Now the time to bounce from two to three, we can just copy this. So you can click on the link, right click, copy. Now you can click on state two and click and right click, paste link. Click on three and you can shift click to straighten out the condition if you want. 
and now we can just double click this and we can change a time and add a random factor to it. So in this case I'll just go 0 0.2 and I will copy the link again, click on 3 and paste the link and go back to 1. Shift click this and line it up a little better and give it a random factor of 0.1. So we have this loop here going from the state of firelight one to firelight two, firelight three, back to one, to two, to three. It's just a continual loop based off these random wait times that we've given it. Okay, well that's all good. That's all fine and dandy, but we don't have any light right now. So we need to go up to this cogwheel again. We need to set some lighting. Click OK click on the tab. We're going to need three lights initially so we'll just set one because we can copy paste these and so let's just set up one and it'll make it easier. And let's call this fire light one. It's going to be a light and it is going to have a switch associated with it. And let's set up our switches now actually. Let's go to switch management here and let's add a folder and we're going to call this fire lights. I'm going to drag this all the way to the top. I'm going to right click on the folder and click add a switch. Uh, I guess it didn't go in there. Normally you can do that. Let's see if it does it again. Yep, okay. So, little glitch there. I can just drag it up and put it into fire lights right there. So, the switch one, we will rename to fire light one. The switch two, you can also name over here fire light two. And then we will need one more, add a switch, and we will call this Firelight 3. Now, let's go ahead and set this light one to be in the Firelights, Firelight 1. And it's an enable or disabled. So if the switch is not on, then the light's not going to show. Well, we need to start the the scene with a light. So what we're going to do is in the switch management under firelight, we're going to set the default value to on. So number one will always start. And this this isn't really necessary, but I just wanted to also show that you can set the default value to be on. So and then you can also set to don't keep on a say on a game save. So with that said, let's go back to our field of vision or the, the, our lighting, and let's start setting up what we want. So we want a, we'll start off with a radius of 55 for this one, or sorry, 54. And we'll, we'll keep our scales the same, we'll keep the angle of the same, because it really doesn't matter, we've got a 360 circle. We are going to apply a one on the opacity, a 125 on the red hue, a 50 on the green hue, and a 0 on the blue hue. And we want our circumference to be around an 85. We're also going to center this on the object with no adjustments. And so if we were to hit preview, we can see the start. You can see this one that I've created, how it bounces back and forth, but you can see where it starts. This is one of the three that are bouncing back and forth. So that circumference blur at 85% gave me this circle here. We will eventually add a light that also kind of fills in this gap. So it looks weird right now, but it will look more like this once we're all done. Okay, so we got this first light here, and it looks good. So let's go ahead and uh, click on this Firelight 1 and we will copy and paste. We will rename this Firelight 2. We will change the switch to be Firelight 2 and we will change the size just by by one pixel. So we'll go 55. This one will go up and we will keep everything the same. So we will click on, uh, we'll just copy paste again, do a firelight 3, change the switch to firelight 3, 
and let's just double check here. So firelight one is firelight one, firelight two, firelight three, okay. And then we will change this by 53, we'll go one down. And so we can't test these lights right now because the switch that they're associated with are not set to default on. So let's go into our action programming and let's start turning these on. So when the firelight one state is on, oh, since we copied setup, we have this apply screen effect on all of these states. So we can go ahead and start get those off of there. So when firelight is on, we want the firelight one switch on, and then we want the last one to turn off. So the last one will be firelight three. So in our runtime actions, we want a couple switch changes. We want a switch change of this object, object self. We want firelight one to turn on for the first and it can actually be the second one. So well, this is what you'll have right here, so I'll just go with this. And then you'll double click onto the one that I just copy pasted, and we'll just change the firelight switch to firelight three, and we'll turn that one off. And we'll hit okay, because it, it's coming, the last one would be three. Initially it goes from setup to one, so this isn't a big deal, but once it gets into this loop, it's going to need to start turning off three and turning on one. So that's why we need this redundancy in here. So yeah, we have firelight one switch and it turns on and we can actually bring this out a little bit. There we go. So we can see it. So firelight one will turn on firelight three will turn off. That's perfect. So now what we can do is we can actually grab both of these using uh so if you have this one clicked you can shift click grab both and you can copy go to firelight 2 and paste and then we're in state 2 now so we need firelight 2 on and it came from light 1 so we need firelight 1 off so on this one we will change this to firelight 2 on and we will change this to firelight 1 off and then we will go to firelight three. Since we haven't copy pasted anything else, we can just copy paste again. And in firelight three, you want the three on and you want the two off. So we will go firelight three on, okay. Double click into here and turn firelight two off. And we will hit okay. So now let's go test it. Let's go to our scene. Let's get rid of my default campfire that I had and let's put on our new one that we just created and let's hit play. And you can see that it is given that pulsating look. It's lighting up when you go in and out. Everything's looking good. The one thing is, is that there is that little gap of just, it doesn't look right. So let's fix that real quick. Let's go to our objects again on our campfire light vision. And let's just add one and we can just call this the, the fire center. And it's going to be a light. We're going to give this no switch because we just want this one on all the time. And what we're going to do is we're going to give a small uh, circle that is just filling in the the color for that area. We're going to give it an opacity of 125. We're going to keep the, the, the red and green hues and the blue hue the same. We're also going to give it no circumference blur. And that way it would look a little a little smoother in there. And with that, I think we can just click play here. And we can see that it gives a just a little bit of it, it looks more like a campfire instead of a a dark area right here. So as you can see, we got our campfire working, 
and it looks pretty good. The reason why I did a circumference blur right here is that if I did a circumference blur 100%, it seems like it starts to get blurred. Like you can't lower the opacity of the blur. I, I've suggested that we can control the, the opacity of the blur. So I hope this can change in the future. But for now, I think this is a good, um, a good way of doing it for now. So that is it for this tutorial and hopefully get some more lighting effects soon.